Hello folks, Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out today's X Lights video. All right. Well, folks, here we are and we've got something that's just a little bit different I want to share with you. Sometimes inspiration for sequencing can come from many different places. One of the places that I find a lot of inspiration is in the sound that you hear and the sights and the visuals that you see in certain movies. And one of my favorite movies, as I'm sure a number of you are very familiar with, is uh, the Star Wars uh, series. And if you go back to 1977, the original movie, the original Star Wars uh, episode for A New Hope, uh, you'll, there is a scene that is in the movie and it is where the Death Star destroys Alderaan. And there are two versions of this that you see. And the reason that there are two versions is in 1977, there was very limited, uh, uh, there was, I mean, as far as it was concerned in 1977, this was cutting edge technology and computer design and computer graphics that were creating some of the uh, animated effects. But a lot of the effects were actual true explosions, the true effects that were created using models and uh, models meaning hand-built models. That is. Now, um, in some uh, of the future uh, releases of, X, uh, of, um, of uh, the, the Star Wars movies, they had uh, significantly enhanced uh, a, a lot of the effects because the computers had become so much more powerful and there was uh, new software that could allow them to do so much more. So in the late 90s, you could see an updated version of the uh, the effects on some of the old movies. And when Lucas did this, uh, there were a lot of people who kind of really upset a lot of people because you took the original out of the original. But to be honest, I was very impressed with it because it showed what could be done if the movie series had started a little bit later on in computer animation history. So what I'm going to play for you is the first shot, the original, and Alderaan blowing up here. Bam. So there's the first effect. It's a little choppy. It's the first time that you actually see a planet blown up in the Star Wars movie. It's really, really a cool sight. But just look at what they did 17 years later in the updates to the enhanced versions of the original releases. Here you see the exact same scene. Everything's going on exactly the same. They probably enhanced this beam here a little bit, cleaned it up, and watch this. Bam. So here you have a whole vastly different explosion or in x lights terms, a shockwave effect that you couldn't do any other way uh, back in 1977, that is. But what, what it also does for us who use x lights uh, as a tool in our everyday sequencing, this is something that inspires me to try to recreate certain elements of this whenever I'm doing a sequence. So currently, there is no way that you can spawn a, um, a shockwave effect where you can control the center or the oblongness of the effect. At least, there, there may not be natively a way to do this, but there are ways in which we can manipulate a shockwave effect. And we're going to be doing so today with the layer setting box and the buffer rotation tab. So first let's go ahead and we'll go to the buffer and we're going to grab the shockwave effect and we'll bring it down here. And in true Star Wars uh, affection, we're gonna use red and yellow and that's gonna give us an orangish color explosion to fit our theme. So the goal that I'm trying to reach is maybe I can't do this exactly, but what if I can squeeze it down and make it just a little bit more narrow? So with this in mind, I'm going to do something that we uh, that you may not know about, which is oversizing the buffer. And oversizing the buffer simply means that you're taking the available space to render this effect, and we're going to make it much larger so the effect can render much larger over top of it. And this kind of gets us past, well, if we make this effect too big here, see how it goes off the screen? And you, you get this, this horizontal line in the effect here. I'll even make it a little wider. See how it, it, it ends right there. We don't want the effect to appear to end. 
So we're going to oversize the buffer. And yes, it does appear to end there, but trust me, whenever I say this, it's going to have a little bit better of an effect whenever we're done with this. So I'm, I'm going to resize this down, and I'm going to say right about there. So we're not to the edge of the matrix. But now, how do we get it in the rotation tab to give us this oblong look? And now, while this may not be 100% perfect, it will do something very similar. And if we go over to the RotoZoom tab, we can find down below here, below all of this other stuff, we have X rotation, X pivot point, Y rotation, and Y pivot point. We're just going to work within the X rotation. So, uh, or the, ro the, the rotations, not the pivot points. That's what we're going to work in. So what happens when we actually make the slider change and we slide this slightly this way? you're going to start to see the narrowing of the effect. It's going to pull it together a little bit. If we do this a little bit more tight, you can see how the effect's still doing the same thing, but now it's pretty narrow. And I actually think that uh, some, I, I want to say, um, whenever the Death Star explodes in the last, uh, in Return of the Jedi, I think that has this kind of an explosion to it as well, whenever they blow up the Death Star. So th there's different ways for explosions to occur. This is one way to get it to work on the X rotation. And if we change it back, we can do the same thing on the Y. And this is one of the reasons why we make the buffer just a little bit bigger so that we don't have this stoppage at the very edge. Now we can adjust our radius to be a little bit bigger. And that probably would be pretty cool. That I would say is pretty workable for something similar to what this is. So we've got that oval shape. Now guess what? See how it's down here below? It's down here uh, at the bottom of your matrix or the bottom of your viewable screen. But this is centered. So guess how we can change our effect? We can go back to our buffer. We can put position our mouse right over the center of the buffer and we can click and drag straight down and look what happens to our buffer we actually moved it straight down and we can move it off the screen and there is one way we can do it keep going a little bit more and we can actually make this a little bit wider of an effect and you can fine-tune your movements to get you this oval shape that kind of keeps going out into the longer distance. Now, I'm not going to recreate the entire effect that you see here, but I'm sure if with a little bit of imagination, maybe maybe a yellow circle shape effect, maybe the fireworks effect here in the center, who knows? Maybe you could do something to recreate this effect in X-Lights from the movie Star, Star Wars, the, the Alderaan blowing up. Maybe you could do a scene that really does kind of fit within your song that you could do that using some native effects that are found right here in X-Lights. So folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is a trip down doing some very specific and detailed things. Maybe it's not for everybody, but I certainly hope you open your eyes to something new and different and different ways to think about applying x lights effects and the ways that you have inspiration from things that you're already watching. So folks, thanks for joining us. Make sure you hit the like button, share the video if you love the video and hit that big red subscribe and bell notification so that you know when we put out some more awesome content like you've seen today. Also, I want to thank you for becoming members at the PPD uh, website. If you haven't signed up for a free membership, please do so. There's a ton more videos on how to do many different things, including how to use effects that are in X-Lights, as well as check out our PPD Sequence Club, where you can save a ton of money through the, v the vendor discount section of our website with pixels, save on Coro props, save on controller build kits, and a whole lot more from many of our affiliate vendors. Thank you folks for watching so much. We'll see you in the next video. Down through the chimney with those and Sam, and every time it rains, it rains.